Welcome back to the Ethereal Girls podcast. I'm Savannah. And I'm Rachel. You know, it's funny. Every time somebody says welcome, I think of the she's the man guy, the principal going, welcome to Aaliyah. Welcome, 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 welcome to Aaliyah. Every time you say welcome, welcome. I think, welcome. <laughs> That's so true. What a good movie. That is Dude, iconic. <laughs> that and, um, ooh, what was, so she's the man, iconic time. That's when I realized. What a girl wants love. Anything with Amanda anything Bynes. Amanda Bynes. Do you remember the girls room? No. The remember. girls room. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Amanda show. The Am- yeah, 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 yeah. Amanda, yeah. Amanda, 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 Amanda show. Did you ever watch Miley and, um. Mandy, the Miley and Mandy show on YouTube. Yes. Yes. That was my Wait. shit. Fun fact. I was actually obsessed with Miley Cyrus. I'm still um, obsessed with Miley Cyrus. Oh, uh, we did talk about this the other day. Yeah. I'm still like, but I have her autograph. Miley. Me too. Oh yeah. So I had a picture with me with braces. Uh, yeah. Was... I had braces in high school. So I don't know if I did. So fun fact. Okay. When I was younger, obviously, I was obsessed with Hannah Montana, right? Everybody. And we had just had Hurricane Katrina hit. Okay. okay? 2005. And we, and we lived in Pearl River. Mm-hmm. And we lived in a FEMA trailer. Oh, rough. And I was like, oh, Miley Cyrus is coming to New Orleans, blah, blah, blah. You know, my dad's like, let's just go down there. Like, we can go see her tour bus. You know, we couldn't. There's no way we could afford tickets, you know? Yeah. So we go down there. And my dad ends up finding two tickets for <gasps> me and my mom. And no. I got to see Hannah Montana live in New Orleans. It wasn't yeah. like 2005, but it was like 2007, 8, 9, something like that. Yeah. It was that crazy. Is so sweet. My dad is the goat. No wonder why my expectations for men are, are extremely so high. high. Yeah. So. Like, if my husband did that for our daughter, mm-hmm. I would be like, you're a man. Yeah. My dad's the goat. You're amazing. I love you so my dad is the shit. I'm getting teary eyed. I know, right? And he's done it multiple times. Like the next concert, he brought me to my very first concert, which was Britney Spears. <gasps> my most dude. Like, what a man. Are you yeah. serious? Like, you sat through a whole Britney Spears concert with his seven year old daughter. Dude, you know? that was back in the day when, okay, now looking at the Britney documentary. That was though, the Anaconda. Yeah. Decade. That's Ugh. the one that I saw too. But Iconic. that was back in the day when, like, looking back at it, when she was forced to perform. Like, did you watch the documentaries? No, but I know. I've, I've oh my read God, all of it. Oh my God, it's so sad. No, it's it just really makes sad. me really feel for Britney. There's actually a um, t shirt that says, I'm in my 2007 Britney yeah. era. And I'm like, bro, yeah. I know why that bitch shaved I her head. I feel this. I know why she <laughs> The older we got, the more we realized why Britney shaved her head. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I but wait, get it. one last concert story one last what? one he brought me to he green day was in town <gasps> oh iconic and uh-huh. we went down there we didn't have tickets and he ends up f- finding two floor seat tickets outside what? of like the superdome uh-huh. i was sitting on his shoulders and the drummer kept looking at me from green day and brought the stage manager over and handed him his drumsticks i almost said chopsticks <laughs> handed <laughs> Handed him his drumsticks. Walk, the stage manager walked over to me and handed them to me. And I have the drumsticks from the drummer. You still have them? Yes, I have a shadow box. I was about to say, please frame them in a shadow yes, box. Yes, I have dr- the drumsticks, the tickets, and like the newspaper article from... Oh. Yeah, dude. I, I was like, yeah, I'm the coolest person ever in the whole world. Fuck y'all. Dude, that is <laughs> sick. Wait, honestly, after listening to our last episode, um, turns out a lot more people listen to it than I thought they would, which I'm really yeah. excited about. Yeah. But... Have you ever sat to think about a hundred people? Like one hundred people sitting there listening. Did we have one hundred people listen? No, but we have a hundred followers on Instagram. I think we have like one fifty on Instagram nice, now. Nice, nice. Which is kind of it's you a know, good start. It's crazy. I'm excited about that. Side, yeah. But my parents are watching yeah. our podcast now. My grandparents yeah. are attempting to watch. Whenever I was explaining to them that we started a podcast, they're like what is that? <laughs> and I was like, um, I guess it's like talk radio. And my grandpa was like, and why would somebody want to listen to you talk? And I was like, you know, that's the whole point of this podcast. Point. Uh, grandpa <laughs> refer via to our first post that we think that we're interesting enough to talk through a microphone shared on the internet. Yeah, so. so I'm actually going over <laughs> to their house this evening to pull up the YouTube. I'm just kidding, Gramps. You know, I'm just, it's pop pop. Yeah. Talk. Oh no. He's totally, he's so supportive. 
Um, but I'm pulling up. But it's the just it's YouTube just funny though because like yeah. it was like kind of like a joke because like we're obviously not that interesting. <laughs> <No. laughs> well, the other thing that like a lot of people were telling me they were like, um, so why would you talk about? mental health Mm -hmm. and that you're on antidepressants Mm -hmm. on the podcast and I was like you know what Savannah and I did discuss should we take this out and then we're like no this needs to be a normalized thing to talk about I'm not upset that I'm medicated I'm not disappointed that I shared any of that information I think it should be right she's not it's not embarrassing it just it is what it is like you're just being honest (laughs) <laughs> antidepressants yeah and you know what it's a phase in life I'm getting through it I'm in therapy and that's okay and I don't see why people think it's not something okay. to be ashamed to talk about yeah yeah so just to let y'all know we will be discussing mental health we will be yeah. discussing All, probably in every episode because yeah, honest- we are not gonna have a filter that's the truth. I don't have a filter in real life, I know. so that's, that's not going to happen so, on here. So um, I will have to do little warnings for my grandparents and my parents to be like, hey, maybe don't listen to this episode. Yeah. Because but I mean, the filters look, will not be there. At, <laughs> like, I'm 25. Rachel's 27. We, yeah. we mentioned that last episode. But like now, mental health is definitely more talked about mm-hmm. throughout social media. It's definitely brought, a, like, there's more awareness throughout the whole mental health industry yes. and it needs to be and I'm glad that it is because it used to be like oh you go to therapy there's such a negative connotation on therapy like you're mm-hmm. in therapy because there's something wrong with you I go to therapy once a week because I literally will not stop my brain will not stop to give my suck myself one second to actually tune in to what I'm thinking how I'm feeling and what's going on in my head yeah because that one hour throughout the week really makes me tune in with myself. So it's not that there's anything wrong with me. It's that I won't stop and I won't be connected with my mind. Yeah. It's like your brain is racing and you, okay. So this is a good way. Um, whenever my sister was in the hospital, they kind of explained it to us this way. They're like, you open the box and then you close the box mm-hmm. during therapy is a all open specific time of the week that your box is open and it allows you to dive honestly, in just like get your mind straight i think therapy is great for everyone my dad was even joking he was like once a week you and savannah should have a therapy corner <laughs> where you just sit down and tell all the stuff that your therapist tells you and call it like free therapy <laughs> and he was like maybe y'all should name the podcast that. free therapy <laughs> free yeah. therapy and i was like well dad well we're not licensed certified yeah, like, we are not <laughs> I did minor in psychology. I didn't. But we did both do kinesiology. That's not. Uh, that does not I know. Make I just wanted therapist. to make a connection of both of us. <laughs> 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 but anyway, that is a really good point. If anybody wants some advice um, unsolicited. We're Savannah here. And I can give it to you. Yeah, we're here. We have an anonymous box on our Instagram. Yes. That's so fun. Um, we've actually had a lot of people enter yeah. in on it. Wait, we had really good yeah. feedback from our first podcast. And like, I know that there there are some trolls out there. So I was like waiting for some negative something. Yes. It hasn't happened yet. But, you know, just like that negative stuff. It just kind of makes me laugh. Like, I, we haven't gotten it yet, but, like, I'm, like, gearing up for it because I just think it's funny when people you know, feel like they have I to just troll think, you. Um, you know? I always think of that song, the, let's give them something to talk, talk about. about. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, also, I don't know if we're doing any better with the sound. Woo! No, I think we're good. We, we fixed our mics better. this time, but I know the first the episode... Knows. We were, I had to turn Loud. my volume down. Yeah, we apologize so for that. We're we working so through sorry. kinks. It's the first episode. Kinky. What do you expect? Mm. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> I was listening to a podcast the other day and they were talking about how there's such a thing as a nice boy kink. What is that? Basically, the guy is like love bombing you mm-hmm. and that's his kink. Like he gets turned he on gets by love turned bombing on you by telling you you're the best person ever. I love you. You are one of the best things ever. And the girl who was talking about it, she was like, you know, it sounds great in theory, but she was like, it's annoying. It was psychotic. She was like, I want a guy. Annoying. Yes. Hate me. Yes. 
I want an Call me ugly. <laughs> who knows how to tell me I'm pretty. And I was, you know, it makes you think, <laughs> guys, jobs are kind of hard. We are very, as women, we are very particular in what we want. Mm-hmm. It's hard. Yeah. Like, I'll tell my husband, I want you to do this one day. I want you to do this another day. And he's got to figure out exactly what I'm thinking of, what day, what time, what to how do. I'm feeling, yeah. Yeah. It's a tough job to be a man. It's a tough job to be a woman, though, too. Oh. So I don't even want to go there. Dude. I ain't going there. On the real, I, um, Dad, if you're listening, don't. I started my period mm-hmm. this week. Mm-hmm. And, you know, two days before my period, I was laughing. Okay. Mm-hmm. Then all of a sudden bawling crying then i was angry i was so mad i was just like punching shit i was screaming the next day starting my period yeah no it's pretty freaking crazy yeah and then when i started my period bled right through everything yeah yeah men yeah if if we have a single male listener that isn't my husband you're lucky you're lucky you don't have to go through this once a month once a month not just once a year every what is it you're literally only like normal for like two weeks out of the month isn't that crazy (laughs) and they say wow women are so crazy i fucking wonder why cut that in half we're normal for like 21 weeks or something like that 23 weeks something like that what is there 52 weeks in a year i I know there's 365 days you want to know the only reason i know that 26 disney 365 you don't remember that? Yes. Yeah, that's how I knew when I was younger how many days we're in a year. We're in a year. I just I don't know. I just knew that. Okay. Well, but do you know the colors of the rainbow? Um, red, orange, green. No, no, no. In order. Oh no. Okay. For some reason. Why do I need to know in order? Okay, but listen. For some reason, I learned them in order, and I find it weird that nobody knows it in order. Isn't it like red? Red, it's orange, like- yellow, green, blue, purple. There's like a word for it, isn't there? Roy G. Viv. Yeah, that's but what it is. But I never learned that. I just knew I learned it. That. I, just don't I must have been that. obsessed with rainbows when this I was This is younger. my thing. As I've gone through school, I've just like brain dumped a lot of things and I'm like, that's not needed. Yeah. <laughs> I get that. I still remember well, it, but I don't remember it like in order or like what I'm doing. It's just, I don't know. There's certain things that I just totally brain dumped the second I learned it because I was like, yeah. The Pythagorean theorem, you can suck it. Do you remember what it is? No. Y equals MX plus B. Oh, my God. Is that it? Oh, my God. Wait. Please look it up. I'm going to look it up. Because I really don't remember. I think that's what it is. I know that when I was younger, I was I learned how to do a um, how to write a check. I did not learn that. I still don't know how to write a check. That is not the Pythagorean Wait, theorem. Wait, what is it? Y equals MX plus B is definitely algebra. Um, Here. <clears throat> the Pythagorean theorem is C equals... The square root of a squared plus b squared. Yeah. Okay, I have something to tell you. What? Because of Katrina, I moved to like four different schools in one year. Uh Uh-huh. And I didn't learn division until like seventh or eighth grade. Uh Uh-huh. And I, my math skills are very, very bad. Okay. So when you said the square root just now, I did not know what to say. I know. That's why I helped you out. I can tell you're scared. Oh, (laughs) God. Help. I need to start taking like online math Wait, classes. You know or something, what I don't know? It's so bad. What geography? I don't know geography either. I've never been. If you tell me where is England, oh, I just know over the sea. Over the sea. That's all I got. I used to know all the states. We're not going to do that. No, but I'm just <laughs> trying to tell you that I'm smart. <laughs> We're not going to do that. Okay, but we do have something exciting to oh, talk yes, about. Yes. Oh, also, we, okay. So talking about feedback, mm-hmm. we got a bunch of feedback on um, the podcast and everything, but we also got a ton of questions about our shoot and what we were wearing and where we were. Yes. And um, Rachel had set up a shoot at Ashley Sievert Beauty with Kirsten at Aperture Photos. Mm-hmm. And, um... It was the cutest vibe. You walk up in there and it's just like, oh my God. It's like you're walking into like back in the day. Yeah. Like to the, everything to the T. Every little like detail was complete. Just yes. Calm. Like 50s, 60s vibe. Yeah, 60s like vibes. God. It's just very wonderful. Yeah. But so Ashley has offered to do a giveaway with yeah. us. So we would like. To offer it out to all of our podcast listeners in order to go in. Santa can tell you the details. Okay. So in order to enter the giveaway, you have to 
like our podcast mm-hmm. and share that you are watching it on your Instagram or listening. story. Yeah. Um, post a screenshot that you're listening um, on your Instagram story and tag Ethereal Girls Podcast and Ashley Sievert Beauty. Yes. You also have to follow Ethereal Girls Podcast and Ashley Sievert, Be- Ashley Sievert Beauty on Instagram as well. Um, we won't be-, be sharing this on Instagram, so you have to listen to our podcast in order to know how to enter. Mm-hmm. And um, you'll be entered in to get a free facial at Ashley Sievert yes. Beauty so in Metairie. So her studio is located in Metairie. Um, and she will have all the day. I don't know what specifically which facial it is. Yeah. I know she has the cutest little setup of, um, robes. You take your shoes off when you walk in and you're in yes. slippers. She gives you a robe with That's fluff. You the just robes, legit. She actually sells those yes. robes. Yep. Um, um, and then she does makeup application and she has her own makeup line foundation and skincare and skincare. So yeah, she did our makeup for the shoot too. I don't know if we said that. Yeah, she did do our makeup, um, but awesome. I did buy some so perfume good. from her. Yeah. I'm wearing it right now. Mm. Do I smell good? I don't know. I really don't have a sense of smell. My allergies are so bad. Okay. Well, I know I smell good because it's mm. Ashley Seaver perfume. I know I smell good. <laughs> 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 but anyway, we wanted to talk about something new today. Mm-hmm. So we are talking about the power, power of, of saying, saying no. no. Ooh, God. Dude, we hit that good. Yeah, I've become to love the word no. I'm still getting comfortable with it. Ooh, I have <laughs> come to love that freaking word. Almost, almost as much as I love the F word. The F word. I'm proud of you. You you thinking that my grandparents and my parents are listening? I so said it earlier, so it is what it is. <laughs> this is an explicit content freaking podcast because you know I I'm I, there's nothing I can do about it. It's part of my personality. Have you ever? Um, <laughs> there was this like meme that I saw on Instagram, and it was like parents will say like fucking a yeah, and they're like, why do they say fucking but not ass or what does the a stand for? Oh. Do you know? I, I don't, don't know. know. You say it. But I say it all the time. So what does it mean? I don't know. I feel like it's something in Europe with an accent. Fucking I. Yeah, that's not. Or maybe northern people. I don't know. I don't know. Do you know people in the north say things so different than us? Yeah. They like, don't say buggy. What's a buggy? Shopping cart. I say shopping cart. I don't say buggy. I say buggy. Well, then maybe you're the weird one. No. People definitely say buggy down here. Mm, okay. So, for instance... Soda or pop. They call it pop. Okay. I was going to explain to you something to see what you call it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, where you store your food, your dry food is called a... Pantry. Okay, they call it a cupboard. Yeah. And I had a friend in my sorority from up north, and she was just like, why are you calling it a pantry? Like, we live together. I was like, it's a pantry. And she's like, this is a cupboard. (laughs) And I was like... And she lived in North Louisiana. It wasn't even up north. Weird. Yeah. You're weird. The other thing. Okay. <laughs> you know when you crack a um, a chicken poops out a? Egg. You say it the same way as me. Egg. egg. I egg. say egg. Egg. They, my friends in college got mad at me because I said, you say it like leg. I say egg. Egg. With egg. an A, but it's supposed to be egg. Oh, sh- <clears throat> I can't. Egg. I can't say it. Mm-mm. I said home weird. Supposedly I say home weird you sound perfectly normal to home me. do you ever go places and you else. think it was when i was at spring hill and mobile okay that's that's probably why you like i don't south. think i have a southern accent until i go somewhere mm-hmm. else mm-hmm. and i'm like dang i'm i was talking to this southern. guy from chicago one time and he was like you have a really big southern accent and i was like i wonder if people think it's hot okay to be honest no what he had a northern accent and i was it just was like hot. oh my god i can't i can't do this <laughs> Really? I can't do it. I don't know it. No, I don't go up north more, like, frequently. <laughs> I can't handle Couldn't them. do it. Do you think our accents are cute? No, I hate my voice. Oh. Oh, I hate my So you voice. decided to do a podcast. Yeah, here I am. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. I told myself I would I don't hate it enough to care enough, but I still don't enjoy my voice. I think when I get drunk, I have a really cute southern accent. But you I know don't who has a really enough. cute southern accent? Yeah. George Miller. Oh, from Jenny in Georgia. She is she's freaking fine. Bomb. Yeah, she's fine. I mean, I would love to idolize her, but. Oh, I do. 
Because you know mm. what? It takes some serious balls to just be embezzling money like that. I wouldn't. I'm Spoiler not saying alerts. I would do it. You were the worst at giving spoiler alerts. Whatever. You did it for Emily in Paris. I still haven't watched it. I didn't say anything. All I said was Team Alfie or Team Gabriel or Gabrielle. Yeah, but then on your close friends. You said. Well, I'll just take you off my close friends story then. Yeah. Do it if you're going to give spoilers. Whatever. Oh. Yeah, bitch. Anyway, let's discuss. Let's discuss. Have you been born as a no-sayer or a yes-sayer? I was definitely a yes-sayer. Your whole life. No, just kidding. So let's 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 go to first off, you're not born that way. You're taught that way. I don't know. I feel like some kids are born no, stubborn you're, mofos. You're taught. You're taught. But let's just let's just start high school. I'm gonna start high school junior high ish period. Let's just both say that when we were younger, we were probably people pleasing yes sayers. So because I our was parents told us what to do. But I was people playing people pleasing yes sayers to my parents i wasn't Mm -hmm. yes sayer to partying or like things that would get me in trouble Mm. when i was younger i was definitely a follow the crowd i was a follow the rules me too i didn't care about what other people were doing Mm. i didn't care at all um as a kid Mm -hmm. i didn't care about what everybody else was doing I was more concerned about, okay, well, I had a boyfriend from eighth grade to freshman year of college. I was playing softball and volleyball. I cared about my GPA. And then, like, with playing softball and volleyball, those are opposite seasons, right? So when I wasn't playing one, I was playing the other. Okay. And every single weekend was a tournament. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I could go party on a Friday or Saturday and then wake up and go play a sport to my peak performance at, like, my peak level if I was hungover. You know what I'm saying? You're like, also I was, underage. Yeah, but no. But I mean, everybody <laughs> parties. Like, that's the point is I, I just didn't really care about it. I could. And there was people that did that. But um, I just, you know, I just didn't care. I didn't mm-hmm. want to party. I had a boyfriend. What, what, am I, what are we going to go do at a party? Mm, I went to the parties with my boyfriend. <sighs> um, yeah. He didn't care either, though. So, like, we were both worried about sports more than anything. So when I was younger, I was very much into the whole, um, whatever, I guess, societal norms. I was Mm -hmm. a follower, not a leader. And whatever anybody said, it would be like, hi, would you jump off a bridge? Yes. If you're doing it. If you're doing it, uh, yes. I was never like, I don't want to stand out. I felt like I was different enough I wanted to be in with the crowd so I was a people pleasing yes mother effer oh yeah no see I just didn't I didn't care the only thing I did get influenced because all of my friends were always like upperclassmen like I always had Mm -hmm. I was a freshman sophomore I was always friends with people that were two years older than me yeah and so like there were certain instances where I was influenced by older people in certain circumstances Mm -hmm. but it wasn't like an all the time thing and I also was like when I did end up caving because I wanted to be so-called cool I always felt like shit about myself like that's not me you know what I'm saying like I and I felt like as an athlete like as I got older I was looked at as a team leader Mm -hmm. and I felt like I translated that in my personal life as well as a person like I just didn't I didn't follow I wasn't a follower I think I was so busy trying to find myself that I was finding myself through other people. You were, tr- yeah, like chameleon ish, mm-hmm. like trying out how they acted and like what they did yes. to see if you liked it and that's how you wanted to be, kind of. I think, truthfully, this is nothing against my parents. I was never taught how to find my own way. Yeah. Or figure out, like, I didn't know my favorite color. I thought girls were supposed to like pink, so my favorite color is pink. Yeah. But. I think it wasn't until I got older that I truly, honestly, after I got out of college that I started saying no. Yeah. Well, and then it's like your mental health kicks in when you're always saying yes to people and it's like you mentally don't want to do that or Mm -hmm. just not in like the mind, like you don't have the headspace to do that. It's like you end up sabotaging yourself trying to please other people. Yes. So like. I don't know. I feel like a lot of saying yes when you really don't want to is just a ton of self-sabotage. Well, that's when I feel like it's you're saying yes to try to go with like societal norms. Yeah. Like 
okay, I don't want to go to this party, but oh, I have to because I'm supposed to go to a party as a 16 year old yeah. when I really want to stay at home and watch TV. I stayed at home and watched TV. We'll see where that's where I basically was. If you would have known me when I was younger, you would have said I was an extrovert. Yeah. I was awarded or whatever it's called, voted most outgoing or most spirited. I don't remember what it was Mm -hmm. Um, for my senior year in high school. I'm going to need to look that up. Now, no freaking way. Of course, I still like to talk to a lot of people, Mm -hmm. but I talk to people until my social battery is done. done. Um, So I've recently realized I am a huge introvert in the sense of, yes, I like connecting with people, but it's like, okay, you have a cup and of water. You pour your water out. You still have to have enough water at the end to. For you. For you. For you. Actually, a better example. Cole explained it this way. If you go to a bank, every time for introverts, Every time you have a social interaction, you're pulling money out of the bank. Mm -hmm. As an extrovert, whenever you have social interaction, you're depositing into the bank. Right. So I realized as I got older that I was socially thinking I was an extrovert, but it caused me so much stress and anxiety. And I didn't notice because I would take it out on my close friends, my parents, my husband. Yeah. So now... I know to say no. Mm -hmm. Even if I want to go do something with friends, Mm -hmm. I'm like, I have done way too much stuff. Yeah. I have to say no because I have to worry about myself and my mental health. So mine is saying no to friends like that. Sometimes it is mental health, but Mm -hmm. right now with the season that I'm in, it's no because of the business. So Mm -hmm. one of my friends sent me um, a podcast or a reel of someone's podcast and she was talking about the season of no. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, you're in a season of yes. You're saying yes to vacations. You're saying yes to a bachelorette trip. You're saying yes to birthday parties. You're saying Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes to all these things, right? All of those things are needed in your life. But sometimes when you're in a certain season, they're not bettering. They're not adding to what you're trying to reach you're, you're not they're not your adding goal. to your goal they're not adding to your Value. success yes uh-huh. so right now I would say that I'm in a season of no where it's like I don't a vacation doesn't sound enticing to me right now yeah going to a party doesn't sound enticing going out doesn't sound enticing now does it make you feel bad sometimes it is tough to create that boundary um and understanding like trying to make your like let yourself not feel bad for putting yourself first mm-hmm. in certain circumstances. And like with being a business owner, like, I don't know, I get, I've been in so many seasons of no's that I didn't realize it. Until later? Until now. Mm-hmm. Like I was like, I, I listened to her reel and I was just like, damn, like that is so right. You know, like, and her saying it out loud, I was like, I've been through so many seasons of no, like when I opened the gym the first time mm-hmm. or my second, the second gym that I opened. I was in a season of no. I was in a season of no. I wasn't partying. Because you were focusing on your business. Well, I was working seven jobs. Yeah. I was legit working seven you jobs. You literally had no water left to give. or no, None. Nothing left to give. I was up deposit. at 4 o'clock. I wasn't going to sleep until 9.30, 10 o'clock. I wasn't getting home until 9, 10 o'clock. I was on a 700-calorie diet because I was competing. Like, what mm-hmm. energy? I had zero energy to do anything else I didn't talk to people. I didn't want anything to do with anyone. Yeah. And I read books and I worked and that was it. And I competed in a show. Do you regret being in that season? No, not at all. You think it helped you and improved you as a person? Yes. Because all the pain. So you think seasons of no's are almost like good to have every now and then? Yeah, for sure. Because when I opened that second gym, I went through, at the time, the most traumatic experience of my life. Mm -hmm. To this day, that was... A very traumatic experience for me. Mm-hmm. And I poured all of... I was a, I was in a state of avoidance. Yeah. Like, I was allowing myself to feel what I needed to feel. But at the same time, I was like, I, I'm the type of person that looks in the mirror and is like, you little bitch, get your shit together. Mm-hmm. Stop crying. This is not going to help you get anywhere. Get your shit together. Yeah. So after that flip switches, I'm on go. Mm-hmm. 
I don't, I'll, I'll cry every once in a while and I allow myself to feel how I feel so, like throughout it. But for the most part, my head is, I'm tunnel vision on whatever it is I'm doing. And then after that period though, I did hit a breaking point. So it did was, you it go was in a very, a period of yes after that. It was a very extreme no. And yes, I did. I had a, I had a whole season of yes after that partying, so, spending money, like very, it was very, very big extremes. So you know what I feel like? What? Because that's what I did too. Maybe it needs to, like, we need to find a balance. Well, yeah. And now I would say that I'm out of balance for sure. Like, you'll, you know how to say, like, yes, like or I just, something. I just went on a vacation in December and was in a season of yes and didn't feel bad about it. Yeah. And then you're going to Paris. Right. And at that, well, it's for work. Yeah. Going to London, but still. But it's for work. But yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like that's a yes. Well, yeah. And like, I'm going to Breckenridge at the end of this month and I'm mm-hmm. in a season of no and I'm, See, so when I went, you're to, balancing. But when I went to Punta Cana, mm-hmm. I told all my clients, "I'm out of town this week. Make sure if you need anything, we get it done." I gave them a month notice. You know, like if there is anything that comes up, just email me. I wasn't mm-hmm. working when I was there. When I'm in Breckenridge, I'll be working. Oh, I see. I, see. I don't want to turn it off. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying? So I can pick when I want to turn it off. Well, that's the beauty of working for yourself and from home. Well, yeah. But right now I'm in a season of no. So when I'm there, I will be working. Now, yeah. full. am I going to be working full days like I am now? No. No. That's why I'm working so much now to where... You have more of a balance. Yeah. And I definitely say I have more of a control of my, like, thought processes during each season. Each season. Mm-hmm. Um, to where it's not so extreme. But again, I was 22 at the time. I just graduated college. I just opened a business and had a very traumatic experience. How I reacted, I am grateful for because it could have been in a totally different direction. Yeah. If I poured all that pain and avoidance into working seven jobs and competing in a bodybuilding show, that that was the industry that I was already in and like bettering my, my like personal um, network Mm -hmm. with people and things that I was doing and adding to my portfolio. If that's how I handle trauma and stress you're proud of that I'm okay with that yeah (laughs) I'm okay with it you know and I went through whatever I went through after that for about a year and a half two Mm -hmm. years but without any of those things I wouldn't be where I'm at that was all a stepping stone to who I have become yeah over the past 25 years you know like so how long do you think this do you kind of want to stay in this power of or this this season of no no yeah you're right like now, digging it. It's like I'm empowering you. It. You know why? It's almost like the motivation's so easy right now, mm-hmm. you know? So the discipline comes easy. When motivation's there, discipline's easy. Yes. So sometimes in a season of yes, it's hard to find that discipline. It's hard to stay disciplined when you're in a season of yes because your mind's not fully dove into what needs to be done. So I'm currently in a season of no, but to the extreme. Okay. To where I am saying no to everything because I don't want to do anything. Yeah. So I think but I is actually. But yours more geared toward your mental? Yes. So you're in a season of no because of your mental. Yes. Season yeah. of yes for work. Okay. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I am so confused. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> for work? <laughs> I am kind of saying like yes and no. I feel like I'm at a happy medium. For emotional, like social stuff. Yeah, personal. I am trying to be more social because I spent some, once I figured out I was an introvert, I said no to everything. Yeah. And I loved it. Yeah. But now all I want to do is sit at home and watch anime. Well, sit at home and watch anime. By the way, podcast people, I'm an anime girly. (sighs) Savannah doesn't like it. I've never seen it, and I just don't. Okay, I did watch show you one episode, <laughs> and it was, it was so bad. It's like anime porn. Yeah, and it <laughs> it was the only reason I showed it to her was because I was uh, like, "Hey, I tried to start this new anime, and it is so horny." And I was like, "I gotta show you, you know how like me. you have videos or you have something, and you're like, look, this is so bad. I've got to yeah. show you, or like, oh my I god, show oh my god, smell it. It smells like shit." Here. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you like gotta yeah. like you have you, to see it. Someone else has to witness it, not just me. <laughs> do you ever feel that way? Whenever like, mm, I'm about to get really gross. Whenever you have like a really bad like an intense fart or something, mm. 
and you're like, or a poop, and you're like, man, I'm really proud of this. I don't want to show somebody, but I just want to tell somebody that was a healthy poop. You don't get like that? No. Like you wipe and there's nothing there and you're like, damn, I'm eating healthy. Mm -mm. You know what? Whatever. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's fine. Like I'm okay with it. I'm just being honest. I don't, is a, I don't feel that way. <laughs> there is a guy when I was in um, high school and he made shirts that said girls don't poop. Yeah. I forgot what his name was, but I know there's some high schoolers listening. Some people I went to high school with <laughs> listening to this. Please, I know exactly what he looks like. <laughs> and I can vividly remember him walking around chanting, girls don't poop. <laughs> and you know what? I'm here to say girls do poop. <laughs> girls poop a lot. And, you know, it's fine. That's going to be the headline of our episode. Our, our episode is not the power of saying no. It's but girls don't girls, poop. Girls don't, <laughs> girls don't poop. <laughs> Speaking about, I would like to get in a season of saying no to unhealthy shit. Yeah. Like what? Um, hmm. Let's see. Food. Yeah. But I'm in the process of trying to have a good relationship with food, so I don't want to say no. I'm just happy I'm eating. But I want to treat my body right and treat yeah. my body healthy. So I Fill want it with to the say like that you need. Yeah. I want to yeah. say, you know, I don't have the power of no for that. That is my weakness. This is my kryptonite. I am Superman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel that. That's definitely. And I, I mean, that comes down to discipline too. Just being disciplined. You know what? And like making conscious, conscious. I cannot talk. You know, Making I've been really decisions. wanting to make fun of you today. For How the, many times I've yes, messed up. Yes, and I'm being so nice, and I just would like you to acknowledge that. I don't want you to be nice. I, I don't like, being, like when people I are like nice. I like being nice and supportive of you. Ew. I told you you look cute today. Okay. That was one thing. But, like, if you're too nice to me, it's cringy. Why? I love when people are nice. I love when people are nice. You know what? You're the yang to my yang, and that's okay. <laughs> Like, yeah, of course I like when people are nice, but like, wait, there is this tic- nice there is this TikTok and it was like when the quiet friend um, finally starts to like stand up and mm-hmm. like, like bounce back mm-hmm. and it's like hold my earrings. Yeah. I was like, shit, that's me and Savannah. <laughs> I was like, the moment I bounce out to somebody, Savannah's going to be like, yeah, bitch, you go. <laughs> that's my girl. <laughs> Because I'm so non-confrontational, mm-hmm. and Savannah is very confrontational. So you don't give a shit. Yeah, I don't. I don't. But it's funny though, because Heather, Heather and I went to dinner the other night, uh-huh. and we were messing with her boyfriend, and she was like, "Oh my god, wait, what do I say? What do I say?" <laughs> but it's because I, I like to start shit. Me but too. It's like joking. It's obviously that I'm joking, you know, and I'm not mean about it. But like, I love starting shit. Yeah, I think it's funny. Like, I love, do I don't know. And, and especially when it's not somebody directly to me. Like, like if it's, like, Heather, like, messing with her words. Yeah. And she's like, wait, tell me what to say. What do I say? What do I say? And I'll just be like, all right, say this. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> we're just yeah. dying in the car laughing. <laughs> Dude, the other day, um, we were with, you were with me, and there was a picture of me. And I'll, oh, I used, Savannah had this, um, the Facetune app. <laughs> yeah. And I put it on. And I had no makeup on. I was feeling like crap. Oh, my I, God. Wait. Hold on. Hold on. Let's what? talk about this face app real quick. Want to hear your story. But can we just just yes. one second? Okay. So I use Facetune. Facetune's one app. But I only use that like if I have like a massive pimple on my forehead. You know what I'm saying? And just like mm-hmm. blemish that out a little bit. Yeah. That's it. Um, face app was something I downloaded because someone's sister or friend or whatever had it and she was like oh yeah my sister or friend uses this every time she posts a picture so i downloaded it and this makes app, you like every other bitch out there dude no it's literally insane the way that this like it, if you're smiling with your teeth it'll close your mouth and have like a like a you could have like a serious look and it looks so real i'll i'll post our results on our yeah we'll on post some on our stories because it's it's like scary it makes you look like you know the only fan girlies yeah, the influencer girlies. But it's like, if you ever feel stupid and be like, why am I not pre... G- Download they, the face app. They Look, all be using that face app. I think app. it's like $50 <laughs> for the year and I did pay, I paid you for did it. You did not. Yeah. <gasps> that's the only way you could use it. 
But I turn oh people God. into boys and I turn Yeah, I it's turn actually boys. Savannah and I will just have fun doing it. <laughs> turn boys into but girls. <laughs> anyway, I sent a picture of me with like full face of makeup. And I was like, hey, Cole, like, you want to have a date night tonight? Like, I got my hair and makeup done. I did not. I looked She horrible. was doing it as a joke. And I thought he would realize because I looked nothing like me. And he was like, oh, you look so beautiful. Let's, <laughs> Let's go to dinner. Let's go to dinner. We're just like, shit. And I was like, <laughs> god damn it. I was like, uh, sorry, Cole. That was supposed to be a joke. Um, I did not get my hair and makeup done. Do you want to just play with Legos at the house? <laughs> and he was like, yeah, that actually sounds amazing. Let's do it. <laughs> so we watched that 90s show and play with Legos. Yeah. It was fun. I will say, I do want to get to the point of like, I want to start trying new things. Like, I thought the Lego thing was so stupid. And it was kind of fun. <laughs> I was about to say something, but it's like, I'm not going to. Like, it's something I would have to cut out. Maybe. Yeah, let's not. I do not want to edit more on this than I already have to. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Remember and tell me later. Okay, so what do you want to try? Um. Okay, wait. Can I tell you things I've already tried that are new? Sure. Longboarding. Oh, I hate it. I Okay, listen. Aw. I am not eating shit on the concrete. Okay. And I'm also not going to ride a skateboard and go super slow or a longboard. I'm not doing that. Well, then you're not good at it. I'm not eating shit. I'm not going to learn. How I'm 25 you... years old. A fall at 25 years old versus a fall at eight years Fish. old is totally different. But like, how do you? I'll stick to snowboarding and surfing. I am not getting on pavement and riding. No, you hit you a come rock. To, you come to the beach with me and let's you ride the longboard. You hit a rock. You are flying off that thing. And if I fall on my knees, I ain't getting back up. Yeah, you will. I ain't not. You're young, mm-mm, 25. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Nope. Okay, so if somebody called you and was like, hey, I know you've never been whitewater rafting. You want to go? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Let me think of a different one. <laughs> <laughs> um, mm, I don't know. I just want you to try longboarding now. I don't want to do. I'm not longboarding. Get that out of your head. It's not happening. Okay, will you ride the bike next to me while I longboard? Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Okay. <laughs> do you think that could work? I'll ride a scooter. No, dude, scooters, they hit your ankle. I'll Have hit you ever you had an that ankle. happen? Yes. Fuck. I was oh, in it. I grew up in a PTSD. neighborhood that had no girls that lived there. I grew up in a neighborhood full of boys. My dad also calls me his firstborn son. So I was outside playing football with all the boys. Jump, And then like each of them had each of them had a trampoline. So I would just switch whoever's house I was at to go jump on their trampoline because my dad wouldn't buy me one. Aw. Bobby. He didn't want me to get hurt. It makes sense. I Athlete. don't want my kids to ever have. Athlete. <laughs> You're playing to college. And I did. And then after college, do whatever the hell you want. <laughs> yeah. Then I, Yeah. <laughs> Um, I really do kind of want to be a skateboard girly. Then be one. I know. So that's what I'm thinking. I think I'm going to, um, I think I'm going to do it. You're going to pick up skateboarding. Yeah. Nice. Well, I'm starting with a long board. Okay. And then I'm going to start skateboarding and then maybe I'll try a hoverboard. Do you know what that is? A hoverboard is not skateboarding. Yeah. Well, I know, but I just, my niece got one for her birthday and I kind of want to try it. Yeah. I just it. wanted to put that in there. I've but this is, it's big for me to try stuff. I usually don't try okay. new things. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. So fair enough. Fair enough. When my sister died, I tried I try new to things do, all the time. I tried to do every week. Tried to do something different. It was a lot of weeks. I couldn't do it. That's a lot. It's yeah, overwhelming. It was too much. Yeah, you were trying to fill a void. I was. Yeah. I tried coffee for the first time. Nice. Didn't like it. No. Yeah, it's okay. But I think I may have tried the wrong thing. One day, I would like if anybody's listening to this podcast, we'll we'll create a little um, questionnaire box. Send me coffee recipes. First off, don't say if anyone is listening to this podcast. We have listeners. Okay. So I mean, if anybody's listening to it that drinks coffee, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. If anybody's listening to this podcast that drinks coffee and has good recommendations, I am a 27-year-old that doesn't drink coffee. I'm currently drinking a matcha. Yeah. Um, I would like to try coffee. I love coffee. Coffee's my shit. But I want some good stuff. So send in the Rex. Send in the Rex. What if, you know what would be fun, Nan? Send in the Rex. What if we did like vlogs? Yeah. Like, um, 
trying to get Nan to try new things. I, what are you talking about? <laughs> You're so like annoying. Longboarding. I'm not longboarding. <laughs> <laughs> I learned how to surf in December. That's trying new things. Yeah. I take a vacation by myself every year. I know. I'm about to go to London by myself. I want to know a fun fact. So Dan and I tried to record this podcast earlier this week. <laughs> <laughs> and we were both. We were pissed. We both had anxiety. We were both tired. Both going through <laughs> so much. shit. And we literally record a whole podcast. And then we sat there and we were like. This fucking sucks. This is terrible. We look, we look like we hate the world. <laughs> Maybe one day we can release it if y'all want to pay you to see it. <laughs> exclusive content. Ex- Only fans. <laughs> can we start an OnlyFans for the podcast? You can do exclusive t- content. I think it's called, what, are you messing up your words again? It's because I just drank coffee. So my, like, my brain is like, but my mouth is meh, 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 meh. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I, that's making me not want to try coffee. No, my point is, is. You can do exclusive. Sub- sub- <laughs> <laughs> you can do an exclusive subscription. I think it's called like Patreon. On Instagram. Oh, never mind. Yeah. Like Joe and Kemp do it and all of them. You can do exclusive content. You subscribe. I'm here for it. Well. Yeah, so we can do that. But hey we guys, can do all if of our- anybody wants to subscribe. <laughs> Subscribe to the guys. Wait, do you know we content. got some subscriptions on YouTube? Yeah. I was so excited. My brother's one of them. He called me and was like, Yeah. Hi. No, we've I gotten really great you. support from the people around us in our community, and I re- really do appreciate it. Like, we do. We do. I do want to say, Savannah and I do have a list of topics we want to discuss, mm-hmm. but if there's, do you think we, or would you be open to making a box? No, that's one of our, that's one of our things. I told you that. Oh, Oh, yeah, we have questions. Yeah, so kind of how the route we're going with our podcast, too, is Mm -hmm. um, we have, like like how Rachel said, we have a ton of topics. Um, Another thing we're going to do is we're going to ask our Instagram and TikTok followers, like, what's the most embarrassing text you've accidentally sent to someone? And things like that, and we'll talk about it and share your responses. Or, like, y'all can ask us questions, and we'll answer them in that way. Let's do – oh, you said this. Once Mm -hmm. a month, we're going to have a – almost like tell-all. Yeah. Where, like, you can either ask us questions or you can ask for advice. Yeah. And then also we're going to kind of, like, do, like, some trend things through mm-hmm. TikTok and, like, things like that. Like, talking about the trends. Um, yeah. We're going to have, like, a funny, fun episode once a month. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that next episode. Yeah. But, um. um other thing we want to do we haven't talked about. We, since Savannah and I are both entrepreneurs, we are going to highlight business owners once a month. So that was the goal with my first podcast that Mm -hmm. I was going to do is I was going to do it for next level marketing and have business owners come on and talk about their industry or how they started and what it's like and their trials and tribulations on getting to where they are and all of that. So we decided to make ethereal girls together and then do a a business highlight each month. Mm -hmm. Um, so we actually are pretty booked. Like I think we're booked until September with interviews. Yeah. We have a bunch of interviews, but if you are a business owner or if you know of a business, business <laughs> i i Here took we are. on your Here we are. <laughs> stutter um if you know of a business owner that you would like to hear more about please send us a dm we would yeah. love to interview them we have a location we're not gonna um do it on this couch right here <laughs> <laughs> but we have a location that we're gonna go to and interview some people and honestly just like inspire other people to become entrepreneurs because we both love it yeah so much yeah that you know I know this is just kind of like a place for somebody to come to and learn about the industry, mm-hmm. learn about Once what it takes in order to get where they are. And they might not be super successful at the time. They may just be starting out. But honestly, your first year of a business owner, it's it's so much learning. Like uh, you can go through school and do everything like education wise. But the second you actually get into the industry and step foot into the world of business. Mm hmm that's when you actually start growing. That's when you yeah. actually start learning. Like you have to go through things in order to learn. Yeah. Like my first year of business was like extreme growth. Oh yeah. Extreme. It was fun. Like it's stressful, but it's so fun at the same time. I think too, it's nice for other people to know that like, Hey, you may cry and you may do a lot of f ups, but that's what you learn from, and it makes you grow as a person yeah. and business owner. 
And we just think it would be nice to hear from other people as well because I know y'all love hearing us talk. Yeah, girl. But, you know, you may want to break from our voices once a month. <laughs> so, and that, like I said, we're not that interesting. <laughs> I don't know. I think we're pretty damn I know, interesting. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Pretty damn. I'm kidding. But, yeah. So, let's have um, – you want to wrap this up? Yeah. So, be sure to – Enter in the giveaway. Yep. Don't forget that. Tag. Share, share your story. Tag a Three Real Girls podcast. That you're listening to us. Yep. And Ashley Sievert Beauty. Yep. To be entered in to win a free facial. At Ashley Sievert Beauty in Metairie. Yes. Yes. All right, guys. Well, well, thank you for listening. Thanks for tuning in to episode two. I'm Savannah. And I'm Rachel. And we are the Ethereal Girls. All right. Bye. bye.